Freshman Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene of Georgia is making new headlines for her latest statements on Newsmax. Let's take a listen. Yes, I, I would like to announce on behalf of the American people, we have to make sure that our leaders are held accountable. We cannot have a president of the United States that is willing to abuse the power of the office of the presidency um, and be easily bought off by foreign governments, uh, foreign Chinese or Chinese energy companies, Ukrainian energy companies. So on January 21st, I will be filing articles of impeachment on Joe Biden. Okay, Democratic strategist Andrew Feldman and culture reporter at The Federalist, Emily Jasinski, join us now to discuss. Emily, let me start with you. Marjorie Green Taylor is a phenomenon that really fascinates me because I think she's probably the future of the Republican Party in the coming days in that, you know, del diving and delving or at least like being QAnon adjacent, being hardcore anti-left. And more is how you are going to be able to win a Republican primary in deep red districts, especially Georgia and elsewhere. Although Georgia, you know, who knows for right now. Um, is this like the future uh, of what we can see under Biden? What do you think that resistance is going to look like? I don't think this is just the future of the Republican Party. I think this is the future of the Democratic Party. I think Marjorie Taylor Greene, when she was asked about her earlier support for QAnon, she said, it, it seemed, I just didn't know what to believe. And I've written about this in the days since Wednesday. There's so many people out there, just normal people who honestly have no idea what to believe. So they're easily dragged into conspiracy theories like this. And I think that's happening on both sides. But this is completely infuriating. It's a stupid stunt. That clip we just heard from Newsmax, she's talking about something that could potentially happen in the future. And I tweeted at her yesterday, like, please don't do this, and got piled on by MAGA Twitter saying, I'm sure listen, did. this yeah. is what the Democrats did under Trump. So this yeah. is what the Republicans are do going to do to the Democrats under Biden. And that is just such a cynical and ridiculous way to, like, abuse the Constitution. It's infuriating because these issues about Biden are actually serious. He actually has, his family actually has entanglements with China and with Ukraine, and et cetera, that need to be probed and need to be paid attention to. And this is a wildly unserious effort that's embarrassing and it's completely the wrong route to go about in terms of addressing these issues. Yeah, yeah I mean, right. Andrew, and this isn't a, a new model, right? I, I remember the Benghazi hearings, like the four multiple investigations we yes. had into Benghazi very well. Like the, the right wing knows how to run this playbook, right? Minute someone comes into office, you cook up a scandal, you figure it out. And look, I, I actually agree with Emily. I think there are real issues to be explored here. You may disagree with that. But um, but this is the playbook that they always run on right wing media with a lot of success. Do you think it's going to stick as easily to Joe Biden as it has to Barack Obama, for example, where it was very successful ultimately or Hillary Clinton? No, because we are talking, we are dealing with a huge element, uh, an unfortunate element of racism and sexism that exists in this country. But also, if Marjorie Taylor Greene is your messenger, uh, I think I think you're going to have real difficulty getting that stick. Um, I also think, though, that I, there's so many things I would like to say about Marjorie Taylor Greene that I don't think are, are appropriate for this broadcast. But she's a disgrace to American society. And what scare what scares me uh, tremendously is that because of stunts like she is pulling, we may see more insurrections, more violence, and that is why the FBI is warning of armed protests at all 50 state capitals. She is one of the people to blame, and I would now use the 14th Amendment, Section 3, against her as well. I know I've been hammering away at this, but the reality is she is dangerous. She is dangerous to our society, just like Lauren Boebert is as well, and the reality is we cannot, as Democrats, fall into their trap like we have so many times before. I really think we need to focus on getting results for real working people across this country once we take back uh, the Senate uh, or are sworn in with the Senate majority and Donald Trump, I mean, and uh, sorry, Joe Biden is sworn in as the next president of the United States. Well, I think you're probably more likely to unite people by doing the latter than, you know, expelling members of Congress. Emily, let me ask you this, which is that in the future of the Republican Party, do you think these type of culture war, um, the, I, I would say this, will the oppositional tactics of 2010 to 2016 under Obama, which were dramatically successful for the Republican Party, is it going to stick in the same way that it, did to, by, that it did to Obama, that it would to Biden? I'm very skeptical of that, but I'm curious for your, for your ideas. 
Yeah, no, I agree with you because I think Obama was a phenomenon that, you know, he, he inspired the Tea Party movement. He also inspired, or it happened under his presidency, the Occupy Wall Street movement. And so there was just this like economic grassroots uprising on both sides of the aisle. But what we're seeing right now is cultural. It's not primarily about like the difference between Tea Party protesters and the rioters and some of the rally goers that, you know, didn't riot that I talked to last week. That's a lot of it was a lot of working class people where this, the Tea Party um, was a lot of upper middle class, middle class people who were upset about taxes and the mm-hmm. potential for government health care. So these are two very different things. And so I think the oppositional, the obstructionist tactics will just be very different. They'll have a different feel. It's not going to strictly be about, you know, these these fiscal issues, these policy issues. It's going to be a culture war. And so I think it's not going to work in the same way for either side. We just have to realize that we're in a completely different era in our politics. So nothing that applied in the Obama administration, I'm, I'm not comfortable saying it will apply in the Biden administration because it's a completely different time. I think yeah. you're right. Um, Andrew, the other thing that's interesting about Marjorie Taylor Greene, and I think that Zagar and Emily are right that this is like the future face of the Republican Party and these Republican prim- people like her, people like Madison Cawthorn, and these types of people are going to be more and more uh, a majority of the Republican caucus. And that means you're going to have, look, you'll hold on to the hardcore base, but you're going to have a continued erosion among college-educated, affluent suburbanites. We've already seen enough of that shift that Democrats were able to pull off two upset victories in Georgia. So it's really a sort of damned if you do, damned if you don't situation for the Republican Party. You either go all in with the Marjorie Taylor Greens of the world so that you can hang on to that hardcore Trump type base or you moderate and you lose that base. But you can hold on to your like affluent suburbanites. I'm not sure that that coalition can hold together really anymore. They've created a monster, guys. I mean, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, this is what they have built over the last decade, and now it's going to come back to bite them. I don't see, again, how this coalition holds, but we cannot, as Democrats, take anything for granted. You know, I we have a hard challenge in front of us, trying to hold on to the House uh, in a slim majority in the midterms of, a, you know, the first term of a—, of a you know, an incumbent president is tough. So we have to, again, not fall for the stunts that they are going to be putting forth. But again, if I'm Mitch McConnell, if I'm uh, Kevin McCarthy, I'm not happy with what happened has happened to my party and, and how it's completely gone off the rails. And I let me make let me make one thing clear. This is still very much Donald Trump's party, um, you know, for the foreseeable future. Yeah, I think that's right. All right, guys. Thanks for joining us. Really appreciate it. Thanks. Good to be with you. Coming up on Rising, our friend of our show, Jeff Stein, is going to join us with updates on Biden's plan for a stimulus once he takes office when Rising continues.